I would like to speak today about the importance of coming into contact with the greater aspect of yourself. The part of you that could be called the greater community part of you. Many people claim to have different aspects to their nature and their personality. And sometimes this is differentiated to such an extent that you have even sub-personalities or different parts of yourself that can be taught to talk to each other and to engage with each other. But today I'm going to talk about something really very different, something deeper, beyond the level of our personality, beyond our conditioning, beyond how we regard ourselves in the normal sense, to look at our deeper nature and our greater being that we have brought into the world. This is the foundation of our spirituality. And it's connected to life everywhere. Now surely you might have heard this before that at a deeper level we're all connected. But rather than simply being an affirmation, this actually holds an important key to who you are, why you're here, and what you specifically have to offer. And I'm going to address this within the context of the brave new teaching called Greater Community Spirituality a teaching that is new to us and yet which is older than all of our Earth's religions combined. In the greater community of worlds, which is the physical universe in which we live, spirituality has evolved to a very, very high state. Not only to a high state, but a state of translatability. In other words, to a state where it can be shared between different worlds whose cultures and physical environments may be quite different from one another. What is absolutely essential about spirituality, what is real about spirituality, what is permanent and universal about our true nature and purpose is something that can be translated and has been translated beyond the reaches of time as we know it. Within this greater continuum of life, a continuum into which we, as a race, are now beginning to emerge, we have a great deal to learn about what spirituality means. It's like going back to school all over again. And though we have universal truths that our earth-based spiritual and religious traditions have provided for us and have encouraged within us, we must begin anew. We're at an entirely new threshold. But though it seems new to us in terms of our ideas and our beliefs and associations, it is something that is fundamental to a part of us that we have yet barely discovered. This is the part of us that could be called the greater community part of us. You came into this world with the plan intact for who you are to be here, what you are to accomplish, the most important people you must find and meet and engage with. And that blueprint is within you. It's indelible. It's immutable. You can fail to find it, but you cannot change it. Now how you express your true nature and how this purpose comes into recognition and full expression and how you meet those key and important people, well, That depends on factors within the world and is unpredictable. But however it can be achieved, it remains your destiny. 
Now, I'm not speaking of the part of you that has your name, the part of you that grew up wherever you grew up, that has your parents and your family and went to school wherever you went to school and has the personal interests that you have. I'm talking about something deeper, greater in you. Something deeper and greater that yearns to be discovered and to be expressed and to be shared. And this yearning really, it's at the heart of our discomfort, our restlessness. For no matter how comfortable we may become, no matter how many pleasures and benefits we may acquire, no matter how much we feather our nest and pad our existence, this yearning remains. And if the yearning is strong in you, it will not let you settle down. It will not let you call this situation good or good enough. It will not let you retire. It will prod you onward, pushing you, moving you. You must go. I must find. I'm not there yet. This is good, whatever this may be, but it is not yet it. And the amazing thing is, until you find that it, you can't stop. The it is not merely an experience within yourself. It is an experience that must be initiated by others and by greater forces around you. This is one of the key things that confuse people about spirituality. Even when people talk about enlightenment, they think they're already there. They just need to be with it. But in greater community spirituality, it is taught that you are not there yet. The journey you must take must take you there. And to find that it, that totally life-affirming and confirming experience, that experience of complete self-recognition, that experience which ignites you to enter a greater arena and a greater participation in the world, that it is something that you must find. If you abandon it, you will feel abandoned. If you belittle it, you will feel belittled. If you mock it or scorn it, at a deep level you will feel mocked and scorned. We can't get rid of God. We cannot abandon what sent us into this world. That purpose that prepared us to be here and that engendered so much support for us to be here and that greater community of which we are a part. No matter where we go in life and how we position ourselves, this still remains. Discovered or undiscovered known or unknown, expressed or not expressed. Indeed, the failure to express this is, in a spiritual sense, in a psychological sense, the source of everyone's suffering. Cannot explain away this suffering using psychoanalytical terms. We're talking about your childhood. We're talking about the trauma you experienced growing up. Those may be real in and of themselves, but we're talking about something far more pervasive, much deeper. The whole value of your life, of your being here, of your existence in the world at this time, is based upon it. And what is it? It is who you are, why you are here, who you must meet, and what you must accomplish. 
those four things, like four pillars, like four legs of a table, all interrelated, yet all fundamental within themselves, represent the culmination of all your genuine learning in the world. And there is a culmination to learning here. You don't go learning forever, not in the worldly sense at least. So the most important thing we have to do is to find the experience and the expression that represents those four pillars. You can have anything in the interim, you can be anything in the interim, you can travel anywhere, you can do anything, but the fundamental need, question, and reality of your life has not yet been addressed. Now, many of you who will hear this recording have brought with you into the world aspects of your past learning that relate to the larger universe in which we live, what I will call the greater community. This is because much of your learning in the past has occurred in other places in the greater community. And you have brought that with you into the world. And perhaps it has been a real problem, it's made it difficult to assimilate, it's made it difficult to adapt, to relate, to participate in the world, because at some level it seems like a foreign place to you. And it is a foreign place to you. Other people don't seem to have this problem. But for you, it's always been there. And in the past, it may have been a constant source of irritation and disappointment. What is it about me that I just can't seem to fit in here? That I don't seem to relate to what the other kids want to do? Or to what everyone else seems to be interested in? different. For you, the world is not a big enough place. And part of your challenge is to bridge your greater community heritage into the world. This is part of the it for you. And to do this, you will need to learn the spirituality of the greater community. For earth-based religions, as magnificent as they are, will not speak to this other part of you. For you will need something different, because your revelation is in the future, not in the past. Your tradition is coming into being, it does not already exist. You are tied to where we're going, not to where we've been. You're connected to what's coming over the horizon, not to what is behind us as we journey. And though everyone has a relationship with the future, everyone has a destiny, for you it is much more powerful and predominating. For you, it is part of the it that you must find. Perhaps you look up at the sky on a clear and beautiful night and you feel that home is out there. A relationship is out there, or something is out there that seems compelling, that draws you, and you would go there if you could, and you would leave this place, this earth, and you would return there if you could, but you're here, and you are a human being. You're not an extraterrestrial. And you have to deal with money and relationships 
and power, competition, and all these things that seem perhaps foreign to you. At least more foreign to you than they do to perhaps most of the people that you know. If you are a person who has this other aspect, this heritage, this otherworldliness, this sense of, I've come from somewhere else. I must have come from somewhere else. This sense of being like a stranger in a strange land. Then you're what I think of as a greater community person. And I deeply empathize with your struggle. For it is unique in some respects to you and to those who are like you. Not that your struggle is greater, for we all must struggle to break free of our conditioning, to find our true and natural state and those relationships that are true and natural to us. That is a struggle for everyone. But for you, the struggle is different, and the way is different, and God's answer is different. For you, human psychology, human religion, human social adaptation, human virtue even, is not quite enough. It reaches you and you feel it and you admire it perhaps, but it doesn't reach your soul. It's like that experience of being able to be in love with someone that you think you have to be in love with because they're in love with you or everyone thinks you should be in love with them but you can't be in love with them. And, and perhaps you blame yourself for this. It's not there. You have come from somewhere else. It's no accident that you're here in the world at this time this propitious time when humanity, however unknowingly, is preparing to emerge into a greater community of intelligent life. And here are all these greater community people, or individuals, wandering around, unable to fit in very well. Maybe you're successful, you've been able to adapt to a certain point, but part of you is connected to out there more than you are to here. You have come at the right time. But the meaning of this is not something you're going to find looking into the world alone. Just like you could not find your church in the world. You could not find your answer to the world. You could not find a resolution to this perplexing aspect to your nature that speaks of something else and draws you where others do not seem to want to go. And here you are. Was it a mistake? Was it an accident? Did you turn right when you should have turned left out there in some interstellar intersection? Did you get the wrong plans? Maybe you got the wrong number on your spiritual dog tag and you got sent to planet Earth when you should have been sent to planet Mirth, which is a whole different place, maybe. But no, it's no accident that you're here. But for you to understand the it about your life, you must learn about the greater community. You must learn about things that most people have never learned or don't feel called or motivated to learn. You must learn about life in a bigger arena because that's who you are. That's what you're a part of. You're not better than anyone else. You just bring a different set of qualities to the situation 
qualities which could be incredibly beneficial to the world. But qualities which you cannot discover using conventional means. Your time, however, is coming, and it's very, very crucial to the success of humanity at this great turning point. If you will prepare, if you will undertake that journey, if you can accept that, yes, you are a little bit different, or there's something about you that really is different than anything you have found here. And you have to go find that, and you need the way to find that. If you can accept these things, and if you are willing to make this journey of discovery, then your life will be validated and confirmed. And you will embark on something that will make you feel so happy within yourself, so right about your life for once, a kind of inner satisfaction that all the stimulation in the world can't produce, a kind of odd confirmation of your being that it so needs. Your being does have needs. It needs to be here. It needs to be recognized, and it needs to express and to give what it has. Without that, at the core of us, we are like caged animals. And we build our own cage of comfort and convenience and consolation. And we're wandering around this cage, pacing, unable to be the true creature that we are. If you are a person who has this greater connection to life, life beyond the world, and if you can feel that, if that has been with you, if that has pricked you from time to time with its absolute reality, then you have something greater awaiting you, a different kind of journey, it is for this reason that greater community spirituality has been brought into the world. Not everybody can learn this at the outset. Indeed, those people who can learn this at its introduction, particularly, are those people who have this greater community aspect of their nature. And it is very mysterious. I can only caution you not to try to explain it or validate it or associate it with things here in the world to the extent that this mystery is lost because it is very mysterious. And part of the mystery is a calling. You know, mystery isn't just mystery. Your mystery is come this way. You need to find out. God is calling you to find out. You have something important to give. Leave your personal suffering. Leave your attempt to fulfill yourself. Leave your struggle for self-validation and make this journey, this journey which takes you to what you really are and why you're really here and brings you to those people that you really do need to meet. who have the key to what you're about. In greater community spirituality, this hyper-individualism that we see in the world today, particularly in our Western cultures, is a given a much more realistic definition to the extent that everything is seen in terms of community. You cannot activate yourself, as I said before, you cannot initiate yourself. It takes someone else, a greater force, either through an individual or a greater force in life, to do that. 
You cannot enlighten yourself. You cannot even take yourself through the essential initiations towards that realization. And the people who initiate you have to be able to know you. And to know you, they must know the greater community in you. Otherwise, as wonderful as they may be, as kind and compassionate as they might seem, they won't know you, and you'll know it. And that recognition that's part of the initiation won't happen. And that life-changing response within yourself won't happen. You can marry someone who's wonderful and loving and generous and virtuous, but if they do not know this greater community part of you, they're not going to understand what's driving you, what's pushing you, what's pulling you. They'll want you to be more human, and you can't be any more human than you are right now. Therefore, take this journey. Find this way. The way is being provided. Because of the world's imminent emergence into the greater community and all of the risk and opportunity that that entails, people with a greater community nature are in the world today as never before. And they must journey a different journey. Similar in many respects to what other people are called to do, but different in some ways. Different in its teaching, its expression, and in the initiation of that greater experience of purpose, meaning, and value that I've been talking about. For you must not only find yourself, you must find that which initiates you, those people, that environment, those problems in the world to which you have an answer, those are initiations. Going off and meditating in the ashram for 20 years is not it. Not for a greater community person. When you read the revelation in the book Greater Community Spirituality, it is speaking for you. Your friend who doesn't have this aspect, who may not have this, is going to read that in a different way. And they may receive tremendous insight from it, but it is not going to strike them. They are not going to feel the confirmation that that book and the teaching that it represents provides. In order for me, as the recipient and presenter of greater community spirituality in the world, I must call upon this greater community aspect in the nature of those who can hear me, for they will be the first to respond to a teaching from beyond the world, a teaching for the world, a teaching that is meant to prepare us for our destiny and to provide the journey and the initiation where we can find the it that we must find. What I'm speaking of here is not my personal creation. <laughs> it is not the result of my study, my any eclecticism on my part. It's a revelation. As it was given to me, it is so given to you. My revelation uh, was more difficult because of my role, because of what was required of me, and because I was the first to study this teaching. But it is a gift to you, and I know from experience what it asks and what it gives. One of the first things that it asks is to accept who you are. To accept who you are 
without having to understand this, without having to be able to explain it to anyone else, just to accept. Because acceptance is the beginning. I'm different. I have a spiritual nature. Something is calling me. I must find out what it is. I will try not to fight it or neglect it or avoid it. This is acceptance. And there's a certain amount of yielding in acceptance. There's a willingness to give over the reins of your life, the demand that things be the way that you think they should be. And that is a very big yielding for many people. Some people just can't do it. To their misfortune. By acceptance, it does not mean that you give your power to a teacher, to another person, or even to God. God doesn't want your power. God's got plenty of power. God wants you to have your power. But to have it with wisdom and understanding, and in the truest sense, be able to be that which you are, and to give what you have brought into the world to give. You can't be giving your power away to anyone to do that. But you can open yourself to receive grace and guidance and preparation those things that you cannot give yourself. No matter how independent you may feel, self-sufficient you might feel, you cannot give yourself grace, guidance, and preparation. Those must be given to you. And to receive them, you must recognize that you need them and that you cannot provide them for yourself. And you must also accept that you don't really know what they mean. Because at the outset, you cannot know what they mean. You can only receive them. You see, un trying to understand things becomes just another means of manipulation. There's no opening, there's no yielding, there's no humility when you demand or expect that you understand things and be able to fit everything in with everything else in your life. That's why they say understanding is like the booby prize, the consolation prize for the person who didn't win. And you'll meet people who seem to understand so much about so much, but they have not found it. It has eluded them. They are only speaking based upon all the information they've accumulated. And that will cease to impress you as you begin to take the journey to that which is real and powerful, both within you and around you and throughout the world. It is important for me to be able to speak about the greater community within you. Because when I talk about the greater community in the bigger sense, in the outer sense, if you can feel this within yourself, you will know that it is the most important thing in the world today. Now to someone who does not have this greater community reality already within them, this is something they have to learn through trial and error as they go along. They can learn it, and many people do need to learn this. But the people who will be able to lead them or teach them will be those people who already have the greater community reality. Because the greater community is alive and real within them. Their notion of spirituality and purpose and meaning and value in the world. And even of the wonders and the dangers of the greater community in a physical sense. These things will be within their ancient memory. 
And though they may not be able to remember these things at the outset, and perhaps in some cases for a long time to come, these things will be in their ancient memory. Just the same way that a person who has done most of their learning in this world has a psychic, physical connection to this world. This sort of natural knowing within this world. They are very intuitively grounded in this world. Even though, depending on where they are as an individual and what they've learned and how circumscribed they might be by things that are inappropriate for them, this is still there. But the greater community person knows things about other worlds. <laughs> how? How is not important? What is important? It's there. They know things but it doesn't fit in this world. And so they cannot activate it. They cannot bring forth the wealth of its wisdom because they cannot connect it to their experience here very effectively. Only a greater community education, such an education that is presented in the revelation of greater community spirituality, only in that way can they bring forth their ancient memory which holds tremendous gifts because it's going to take this kind of learning to end war and hostility within our world and to prepare us to encounter other races in the greater community, some of whom will not be coming here for our benefit. Only a greater community education and an understanding of spirituality, an experience of spirituality within this larger context, will be able to enable us to see beyond the very blinding factors that we all have as people in the world. Therefore, I call upon you, if you are a person who has such a reality within you, however ill-defined it might seem, I call upon you to accept that you have something different and unique. Not unique to you individually, but unique to you and others like you who have come to the world at this turning point. A turning point where human isolation comes to an end and the accountability of having to deal in a larger universe with all of its complexities becomes a reality for a race that has evolved largely in a state of isolation. You who have come at this time bearing what you have learned and what your spiritual family has given you before you have come into the world. My calling is for you first and foremost to accept this and to begin to reclaim that which you hold already and to learn that which you must learn to become an expression of your spiritual life in its most complete and total sense. My answer to you, my answer to your question, who am I? Why am I here? Whom must I meet? What must I accomplish? My answer is to offer you the preparation because the preparation is the only answer that means anything. Definitions, words, concepts, images. These may satisfy the mind temporarily, but they do not satisfy the spirit. For the spirit must find and express and give. And until it is free to do this within you and within me and within everyone else, we are incomplete and we are yearning. And the search will go on and dissatisfaction will abide with us until we begin that process of acceptance and preparation and contribution that represents our true activity in the world. I'd like to end with a blessing from the Unseen Ones. 
is the name given to angels in the greater community. Ranika Nove Trinanza, Misuveda Maya Tun. Call upon the power of all those who carry the knowledge and wisdom of the universe to help us in our being in the world at this time, in our journey, in our purpose, in our mission here. Nasi Novari Karam, the presence of the unseen ones, is with us. <laughs>